So for the next presentation, we have my colleague uh, Judith Martins, uh, who is going to share the experiences from the African region. And Judith, the yeah, screen is yours. Thank you, Sunny. It was really interesting to hear the cases from um, Asia and Latin America, a lot of synergies there, and I will be presenting to you the African context uh, where we are looking at immobility e as a means of decarbonizing transport. I'll begin by presenting a context or an explanation on why we are promoting electric mobility in Africa. One of the main reasons for this is to improve the air quality in urban areas because it has been noted that with the quick and rapid urbanization that African cities are experiencing, there has been a steady and gradual decline in the air quality. And one of the main contributors to this is the transport sector. So then electric mobility is seen as one of the possible solutions for improving the air quality in urban areas and also reducing the climate emissions from the transport sector. In addition to this, the transport sector in East Africa and in Africa in general is very dependent on imported fossil fuels. So we do have the natural resource, but we do also um, import a lot of petrol and diesel, which is used widely in the transport sector. And so electric mobility is seen as a possible way to mitigate the heavy dependence on fossil fuels. Of course, again, electric mobility is there, is being implemented to promote the switch to clean and renewable energy. So if we are going to shift from fossil fuels, we need to give an alternative. And the alternative that we have provided then or we are promoting is to switch to clean and renewable energy so that even as we implement electric mobility, it is implemented in a fully sustainable manner. Um, electric mobility has an economic potential in Africa. We see it having a potential for trade, a potential for creating jobs, especially in assembly and manufacturing of parts. Uh, we see it diversifying the value chains in the transport sector and, of course, creating synergies with other um, sectors such as technology and ICT. And, of course, we also want to improve the informal sector livelihoods. Just to give you a little bit of a background, the transport sector in Africa is largely informally led. So the informal sector is very strong in the transport sector. And as we electrify mobility in Africa, we are hoping that we can improve the quality and the livelihoods in the informal sector. Electric mobility ties very well to the SDGs and what you see on your screen are some of the SDGs that we work um, more closely with. That is SDG 3 on good health and well-being, of course, when we improve air quality in cities, then we are improving the good health and well-being of the citizens in these cities. Then we're looking to promote affordable and clean energy, which is what I mentioned on spurring the, the transition towards renewable energy. We are hoping to, again, have decent work and economic growth, while at the same time promoting growth in the industry, innovation and infrastructural sectors. And one of my favorite sustainable cities and communities, electric mobility is one component within a wider um, component of sustainable mobility and sustainable uh, communities. We are looking at it as a means to attain sustainable cities and communities. And of course, promoting SDGs 12 and 13 on responsible consumption and production, as well as climate action. So within the Solutions Plus project, we are mainly working in East Africa with some synergies with other regions on the continent, but East Africa is where we have um, concentrated most of our activities. And I will, from here on, um, present to you the context of two main cities, that is Dar es Salaam and Kigali, and also reflect on a possible replication city um, in Kenya, that is Nairobi. What is the situation like in, in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam? Normally, um, short trips are done by walking and cycling, and then we have a growing usage of motorcycles and three-wheelers. And as I mentioned before, the transport sector in Dar es Salaam is still heavily dependent on fossil fuels. So when we look at the growing usage of motorcycles and three-wheelers, we are hoping to electrify this particular segment of the fleet so that we can reduce the air pollution in the city. The longer trips are normally taken on motorized transport, so that is bus, there is a plan to um, increase the, the coverage of the BRT system in Dar es Salaam. And of, also, of course, there have been discussions of um, implementing an urban rail system. In Kigali, um, this is a good um, 
outlook or a good reflection on the situation in Kigali. Non-motorized transport is still the dominant means of transport, um, but it does need improvement. So we do have quite a number of people walking and a, a number of people cycling, but there is a lack of facilities and we're we are trying to see how it is we can improve the way this segment of the population moves. For instance, for those of you who do not know, um, the city of Kigali is quite a hilly city and the terrain is quite difficult to cycle on. And this is why we are looking at the possibilities of electrifying the bicycles in the city. And my colleague Edmund will say more on that later on in the presentation. There has been a public transport reform process that was launched in 2012. And now we have um, we are trying to work with these companies as well to see if there are possibilities of including electrification aspects of the BRT system as well. That being said, um, the motorcycles still carry a large share of trips, both in the last mile and trunk trips within the city of Kigali. Looking at Nairobi, public transport in Nairobi is mainly um, operated informally, owned by privately owned and uh, transport modes, that is minibuses. We also have the motorcycle taxis, which are uh, commonly called border borders, and we have bicycles and tricycles, the tuk-tuks in Nairobi. There is also similar to what we have seen in Dar es Salaam and Kigali, a growing usage of motorcycles. And in the next few slides, I will explain why this is very important for us to note. When we look at the trend in Rwanda, for example, we see that um, over the years from between the years of 2014 and 2018, there has been an exponential growth in motor vehicles. But when you look at which vehicles are actually taking the larger share of the vehicles growing in, in Rwanda, you find that the motorcycles are the ones that are actually growing at a large scale. And when we look at the emission trends in Rwanda, there has been it has been noted that in this same period, there has been um, an increase in pollution in the cities that is linked very closely again to the growth in the motorcycle fleet. So this shows then that the motorcycles are contributing heavily um, to the pollution in the cities and this is why we need to urgently intervene in this situation. With this being said, this presents an electrification opportunity within the two and three wheelers ecosystem. And my colleague Edmund Teko, who was not able to be with us today, recorded um, a few slides just telling us more on what it is we are doing in Kigali and Dar es Salaam. And he will take us through the next few slides. Enjoy. In Dar es Salaam, we are deploying electric three wheelers to support the Dar es Salaam BRT system and provide last mile connectivity to the residents in the city. And in Kigali, we are also intending to test electric share systems on a, a most widely corridor, whilst we also deploy electric motorcycles and then providing some assistance on place visibility studies relating to the electric bus deployment. We have done quite a lot of uh, activities since the beginning of the project in January 2020. We have carried out usually assessments. We are currently also carrying out impact assessments. This we would like to do uh, through ex ante and ex post assessment. And uh, we already came about some initial results already in the two cities. And we must uh, mention here that in Dar es Salaam, the policy environment uh, is supportive of sustainable transport mobility. However, there are no direct uh, mention or direct efforts towards electric mobility promotion. However, in Kigali, we have seen very recent development already on the policy side where the city and then the national government are already instituting policies to incentivize electric mobility deployments. And uh, through our capacity building activities, what we did was to carry out a training needs assessment. And these training needs assessments have now informed us on where or what the needs of the cities are with respect to uh, the areas that they need training on, 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 on electric mobility. So we indeed, with the, the help and support of our partners, came 
to some conclusion on some few training topics to deal with. So this year we already are starting on charging infrastructure and um, I must say that in the last week of September, uh, just last month, we have started with a general training uh, where we had participants cutting across private and public sectors participating and learning about charging infrastructure deployments, the associated business models and the like. We indeed will also be carrying out city specific trainings in the last week of uh, October, starting 25th of October, where we are dealing specifically with the needs that came just dwelling on the city needs. Apart from the capacity building, we also are supporting local innovators. And in Kigali, we have two local innovators that were selected and who will also be supporting the project to deploy physically electric bike share system as well as electric motorcycles. Uh, likewise, in Dar es Salaam, we have two startups that have been selected and then they will be taken on the three-wheeler segment of the demonstration over there. We are also supporting the cities to develop uh, mass applications and uh, discussions are ongoing, especially in, in Kigali, to see where we could support the city's uh, regulatory authority, which is responsible for the operations of the bus system in, in the city. And, all, and also in Dar es Salaam, we, we would like to support through our Solutions Plus Partner Plus service to also improve on the city's DART Navigator app, which is more of a multimodal travel planner. Uh, in that regard, I would say that we are making efforts to the best of the consortium or to the best of the expertise we have to help the two cities to integrate softly and also physically electric mobility into the city's transports. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we would like to build partnerships, help the local innovators to build business models. In that regard, we are also launching a call for European innovators who will be selected and then to support directly the local innovators that were selected and they will receive direct support from the EU. Regarding policy funding and then scaling up, we already started with the, the policy advice paper on electric vehicle charging infrastructure, which we are supporting the Rwandan Ministry of Infrastructure with. Uh, this policy paper will be launched in the last week of uh, October and uh, subsequently we will have the, the, the policy paper published as well. So in a nutshell, I would say that these are the activities we are currently doing in Kigali and in Dar es Salaam and then we believe that these demonstrations will be a stepping stone, will, will be the springboard to bring in electric mobility in the cities and also delivering on the agenda to reduce emission from the transport sector and ultimately leading up to delivering on climate change objectives. Thank you very much and I wish you good time. Yes, so we want to say thank you to Edmund in absentia. Um, and as we promote electrification of two and three wheelers in Kigali and Dar es Salaam, we are also looking at the electrification opportunity for bus fleets in the replication phase. 
currently we are still looking at what are the possibilities uh, which countries might be um, in Africa, which countries we might be intervening in terms of electrification of the bus fleets, and this will be announced at a later stage. But feel free to visit our website solutionsplus.eu and here you will find more information about the activities that we are doing in Solutions Plus on our website. Thank you very much for being with us during this slide event and I hand over back to you, Sunny. Thank you so much, Judith, for the presentation and also to Edmund who was uh, there digitally. Um, great, and uh, I just wanted to highlight that all the resources that the colleagues have uh, mentioned here uh, are available from the Solutions Plus website and uh, they can be downloaded uh, from the Solutions Plus website.